So, okay, this is our webinar today on January 22nd, and we're going to be talking about um, how to properly tension your happy embroidery machine. In front of me is the happy 12 needle Voyager, but this procedure should be universal for just about all happy machines except for the HTU. So the first thing I'm going to do is open the bobbin case door. Tension starts with setting your bobbin correctly. The way tension works with this machine and why it's so important is that the, as the, the needle bar goes down to drive the thread down through the garment, then it's presenting a loop of thread that's below the garment. And the bobbin down here is dispensing a loop of thread that interacts with that loop and basically ties that into a, a half twist with each other underneath. So the bobbin is underneath the garment and it's pulling downwards and the upper thread is pulling upwards and they're in a balance that is a constant ratio of approximately five to one. And what I mean by that is that the upper thread, um, when it makes a stitch, the upper thread should be about five times harder than the bobbin pulling down. If you mess with that ratio at all, you're gonna see problems. So basically this is pulling up harder, significantly harder than the bobbin, which is pulling down every stitch no matter which color you're using involves the bobbin the easiest thing to do to start with tension is make sure that the bobbin is correct so what you want to do is remove your bobbin case i'm going to give you a nice universal tension that works for most situations so you're going to replace your bobbin case uh, refill your bobbin uh, case with a new bobbin pretend this is a this is a partial bobbin and Follow your instructions on properly loading your bobbin case by running the, th the thread underneath the tension flap. This is a piece of metal that presses against the side of the bobbin case. And as the, uh, the thread passes through between the, uh, the tension flap and the body of the bobbin case, it, that pressure from the uh, tension flap is being applied so that it's creating resistance to that thread being uh, uh, feeding out. And that's your downward force that is being created from the bobbin case. And it's counteracting the up, upward pull of the, um, the upper thread. So, um, so to test this downward force or that pull, that drag, you can actually hold it like a yo-yo like this. And what you're looking for is you want that um, tension flap to be tight enough that the bobbin case can hold itself up. And so think of it in this way, <clears throat> is that the weight of the bobbin case and the bobbin together weigh by sheer coincidence the right uh, or the same as the amount of force that you want to have um, of that tension flat pulling. So and if you want to measure that, it's, it turns out to be about 25 grams. So in other words, if you hang this here and this is able to hold itself up, that means that the bobbin case um, tension flap is holding on with at least 25 grams of tension. But the problem with this test is that you don't know if it's tighter than 25 grams. So we take the test uh, because this is going to look exactly the same, whether it's tighter than 25 grams or at least 25. If it was less, then it would start sliding on its own like this. So at, at least we know that this is at least tight enough, if not too tight. Now, I'm going to drop this a little bit and then stop it and just do it gently like this. And you can see that what's happening is as I drop and stop for that moment when I stop in midair, the bobbin case weighs a little bit more than 25 grams because it's got that downward momentum. So that's proof that it really the tension isn't much more than 25 grams. And in fact, a repeated test um, on a really expensive uh, tension gauge. This uh, doing this and seeing that it unspools a little bit and stops um, shows that, that that's actually pretty darn close to 25 grams, if not right on. So in summary, load your bobbin case correctly. Don't hook it into the uh, into the um, pigtail of the loop yet to put it in the machine. Just hang it from the tension flap. And the first thing you want to do is check and make sure that it's at least tight enough to hold itself up. Only do this with a new bobbin because you're comparing the weight of a new bobbin and bobbin case against the tension. Don't do it with a partial bobbin like I'm doing. And then bob it because if, um, if it sits by itself, we know that it's at least strong enough, but we don't know if it's too strong. 
but then bob gently the bobbin case and it, when you stop it it should unspool a little bit which means that it's not so tight that it's just going to hang on no matter what it's just tight enough to hold itself up which puts that right correctly at 25 grams now for the person who just asked that question <clears throat> What's happening when my bobbin thread is showing at the top, um, as an example to this, uh, the first, if you set this tension correctly, if you have any other kind of tension problems, since we know that um, your bobbin is correct because you did this test, then it means that if something's wrong, like the bobbin thread is showing at the top of your embroidery, or if the, um, or if um, you're looking on the reverse side and it looks wrong, the, threads to the, there's too little bobbin thread any problems like that you'll know that the tension will be off here so set your bobbin case tension first that way you're not chasing both the bobbin and the upper that eliminates the problem further down the line if you do have tension problems then it's going to be with whatever color you're selling so that's the first thing so now that i've set my tension correctly for the bobbin case i'm going to just pop that thread into the pigtail um, and then put that into the uh, bobbin case itself. The next thing I'm going to do is, <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sew a design uh, to test the tension. So if you, and the, the principle behind this is, is to ask you to think about when you buy a new um, printer, the first thing the printer often does is ask you to insert a piece of paper and, and uh, let it do a test print. This is your test print and what the printer does <clears throat> is it'll start printing stripes and characters of all of those color nozzles so you can see how each of those color nozzles is performing. That's exactly what this tension test does. So I'm going to find it here, but if not, you're going to see that any old uh, design that has satin stitches can work as long as you have reasonably wide satin stitches. But I'm going to go into the pattern screen and I'm going to find some kind of uh, tension test here. and. Whether it's here or not, we'll find one. And this one actually happens to have one in here. So I've selected a tension test, which you can download from happyemb.com. So the next thing is we want to sew this out. And the way this tension test works is I'm going to go ahead and pick the hoop that matches my big 12 by 12. And um, I don't expect you all to be able to see this, but basically I will zoom in closer when we start sewing this. But this is a 12 needle machine. so this tension test will test sample all 12 of those colors so without going into too much detail uh, here i'm just going to set up the design so that all 12 of those sections test a different needle so and it looks like this has already been done for us just like a julia child's cooking show so we can skip those little details i'm going to make sure when i trace the design that it fits within the hoop um, i'll go and hit start we know our bobbin's correct, so remember, if there are any tension issues, then it's going to be with that color. So first, it's going to sew the first color, and we'll just sew that really fast. And I'm going to stop that in the middle of middle of the uh, sew out. Some people wait till this is finished, but we now have enough to we now have enough to uh, look at the state of the tension here. Okay, so what you can see here is that we uh, part of a little H is sewn out. And basically what this is, is a satin stitch. Basically most lettering stems, it's creating the stem by going left, right, left, right, left, right, making uh, just like you would coloring in an area with a pen or, or a magic marker, you're, sewing, you're drawing left, right, left, right, left, right, back and forth, row after row to fill it in. So there's, these are rows of stitching. And if we flip the to the other side, what you're going to see is that um, there should be a bobbin stripe down the middle and then the stitching on the left and right uh, either side um, you can see the loop forming for each one so what you're looking for really is you're looking to see that you're looking for a white bobbin stripe it's about 25 to 30 percent one third of the width down the middle um, and then the color on either side one third one third it's a, the, the fact that it's a little bit narrow so that means that the that the, there's something wrong with the red thread. Remember, we set the bobbin correctly, so, the, so anything that's off is going to be that color itself. If the stripe is too narrow or there is no stripe, then that means that the, um, that color is too loose. 
if the stripe is too wide. In fact, as the person had asked me earlier, what if their bobbin is coming up to the top? Then that means that since the bobbin is correct, then that means that color is too tight. So that in this case, for example, since this is too loose, the red thread is too loose, we're going to have to tighten the red thread. FYI, if you can see any of a bobbin stripe, you're already in ballpark, you're pretty close, so we don't need to make much of an adjustment. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and put this back on the machine, and then I'm going to make a, a live adjustment. And let's see what happens. So the red happens to be needle one to make it easier. So we're going to adjust both the upper and the lower knob. Um, these are the ones that contribute to it. Since it's a little bit <clears throat> on the loose side, then we want to look at this and uh, tighten it somehow. Couple rules. Number one, you don't want one knob really, really tight. This one looks like it's pretty tight because it's so far in, in that the, uh, the, the black um, um, post that it screws into is almost flush with the, the, uh, the knob. You shouldn't have to do that. Um, and, but you can also see that the uh, lower knob is much further out. So if I'm going to tighten one of them, I'm going to tighten the lower knob because I don't want to over tighten one. So, so I'm going to grab the thread by needle one and I'm going to start pulling downwards. Pull downwards, pull downwards slowly and get a feel for how much tension that is. Okay. So I'm pulling and hopefully what you all can see is that number one, the, the thread brake sensor is working and also the lower tensioner's wheel is also turning. So if, if not, fix that first to make sure that, um, that they are or you're going to have a problem. All right, next thing I want you to do is, as this is feeding, you can see it turning. I'm going to lift the disc on the upper tensioner, and it should feel lighter. So notice that it's still pull, I'm still pulling while I'm doing this. Release the tension on the upper, let it drop, and then um, you're going to see that the tension uh, will get tighter. And if, if you haven't checked your tension on that knob, don't make any adjustments yet. Do this lift check and let it drop. And what you're going to find 99% of the time is you're going to recover some of the tension you had, you'd set before. And then, then do the same for the lower knob. Release the tensioner on the lower knob and let it drop. When you release it as you're pulling, it should feel lighter. And then I let you drop. Uh, once you let it drop, it should feel tighter. Make sure you feel those differences. That's number one, it's telling you that the that it's working. And number two, like I'd said, uh, as you lift and let it drop, lift, let it drop, you'll find that the tension will recover itself from when you last set it. Now, how often do you have to do this lift check? Um, I just do it if I haven't used that color for a long time and I need to, um, and so I wanna make sure it's right. So I'm not adjusting the tension. Um, and what I actually f felt, to be honest with you, is that the tension got a lot tighter. So <clears throat> I'm gonna assume that my coworkers set that tension correctly, but you notice when I first tested it, it was, it, it was a little bit light. So guess what? Um, that lift check may have been enough that I don't have to adjust my tension. So I'm going to check, let's finish sewing that. But this is really important because this really helps you see how to maintain tension. Be confident you're going to get good tension. So I put the uh, put that back on there. I'll go back to needle one. And let's continue sewing for a few seconds and let's take a look at the tension now. So again, we're sewing this little section and let's see what happens. OK. All right, so now we've sewn the rest of this half H or actually sideways T. So remember, the bottom section here was a little bit loose. Um, and then it sewed the upper section here in this crossbar here after I'd made my adjustment. Let's take a look. And actually, to tell you the truth, it looks about the same. So um, it felt a little bit tighter, but maybe it wasn't tighter. But either way, you can see that it's still a little bit on the loose side since we are now sure that the tension is correct is, is a little bit on the light side is that I want to tighten um, the tension up the upper tension so this is a, uh, this upper knob is a little bit too tight for me um, I don't want to tighten it anymore so then I need to add go to the looser knob do one full turn and as you're pulling on the thread 
Just make sure you can feel the difference. I'm going to do one more turn because I don't feel much of a difference. And then we'll leave it at that. OK, let's sew that again and then let's see what happens with two full turns. On that uh, on the tension knob and the lower tension knob, so I'll go to make sure the second color I sew is also needle one. And then I'll go ahead and hit start and let's see what happens. All right, we made a difference now. So it's a little bit wider, not that much wider, but it's definitely wider. So, but again, the uh, the lesson that we're showing here is that set your bobbin right, test with any kind of satin stitches and look at the reverse. If you have too little bobbin, then increase your tension. If you have no bobbin, increase your, your upper tension. If you have too wide a bobbin where it goes the, the whole way across, then you wanna decrease the tension. Now, finally, the person who asked the question on if the bobbin stripe is going across, I would ask, recommend you check one more thing. If it only, if the white um, went too wide on only one section, maybe it got caught temporarily. If it goes super wide like that, it could be that the upper uh, thread got tight, got caught on something. So you may not also need a tension adjustment. It just may, may be a matter of test pulling the thread. When I tell people pull on the thread, do your pull, your pull check, your lift check, you're also making sure that the thread doesn't snag, which is the more common cause as to why the bobbin thread may show through on the top is that maybe it's just getting caught somewhere. So that's a good discussion on tension. I'm going to open the floor. I know there are a few of you here that uh, have some questions.